Hi everyone and welcome to episode 9 of the Auto Guide show. We are the editors of autoguide.com and it's many sister sites. Um, and I am Jody. This is Sebastian and we also have Sam here. Um, a new episode of the podcast drops every single Friday on YouTube or your favorite podcast player. Uh, and if you're listening on an Apple device, please rate and review our podcast because it really helps us get more, get to more people and we want to get to more people. Um, today we have a whole bunch of fun stuff to talk about. So we have a hot hatch, we have the Veloster N. Only fun stuff to talk Only about. Only fun today. stuff, zero crossovers. Zero no crossovers. <laughs> and we also have a <laughs> wide body Hellcat that we were all Dude. lucky enough to drive last week. Uh, we're going to actually start this week with a user question from Sidban. So he has about 30k to buy a new car. It has to have four doors, it has to have good safety tech, and it has to be fun. So he threw out a couple options, uh, the GTI, the Elantra GT, or the Elantra Sport, or he's wondering if, if it's worth it to stretch the budget for an A4 or a Genesis G70. Yeah, um, those are just some pretty good options. I'm a, an avowed fan of the GTI. I think it's pretty mm -hmm. solid. Um, it does get pretty expensive, though, once you add in all the safety features. It is a German car, so yeah. everything <laughs> costs more money. And also, like, there's no way you can get an Audi for that price, so I think no. we should just discount I that right away. I think as a rule of thumb, you should leave out the luxury brands, because you'll automatically be paying a premium just for the badge. Exactly. So if you don't care about the badge, then go for the sister cars in the same car family, like the GTI versus the A4, for example. I think for that sure. would be a lot better. Or even the G70, you might be better to even find like a used Stinger or something like yeah. that if you're going to go for a G70, just to avoid the luxury brands because you would pay a premium without getting you know, added safety tech or more performance or things like that, right? Yeah, I mean, even the Genesis, um, it starts at about... It's Around well that, it's like 34 or something like that, but that's for a base base model. So as soon as you you know you add on all those options and that safety, safety gear, gear, you're getting closer to 40k, which is way out of your budget. So so we thought of some suggestions. Yeah. Uh, the Veloster Turbo is a pretty good value, but it only has three doors, but it does have everything you want except that. That's mm -hmm. three quarters of the doors you were asking for. I know. Which I think is a pretty great hit rate. It's not bad, right? Also, I'm inclined to think he may have, like he may be putting people in the back because he wants four doors. Yeah. And uh, the Veloster is a two plus two, which is something to consider. There's right. no middle seat in the rear. Um, and the single door sort of makes it kind of hard to get things right. in and out of it. And there's not a whole bunch of room for the people who are sitting back there. Yes, yeah. but it is a good price. Um, so the other suggestion we came up with is the Honda Civic Si, which is a pretty good all-rounder. It mm -hmm. hits all those points that you wanted. Uh, you can get one for about 24k in the U.S. and it comes with um, standard Honda Safety Sense. Yeah, it's got a it's got a full suite of active safety stuff. So if he puts a big emphasis on active safety. Uh, the Honda sensing suite of stuff is really good and it's standard on the Civic, which is yeah. pretty impressive. And the SI is pretty fun to drive. Like it's not the most hardcore thing you can buy, but it doesn't seem like performance is one of the uh, criteria that he really wants to focus on. Exactly. Well, he said fun to drive and it is it fun is to fun. drive. So yeah. th it satisfies that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a great manual transmission. Yeah. The power delivery is pretty snappy. Yeah. And if he's willing to look at an Elantra GT or an Elantra Sport, mm -hmm. uh, you should definitely give the Civic SI a shot too then. For sure. Yeah. Um, in comparison to the Elantra Sport, I actually feel like the Elantra Sport has a bit more personality than the SI, um, but it's just not as good to drive. So yeah. it you know, really depends what you're looking for. Um, so yeah. hopefully that answers your question, Sid Ben. And uh, if any of our listeners oh. have, oh, yes. A WRX as well might be worth checking True. out because safety has, or uh, sorry, Subaru has lots of active safety stuff that comes as standard as well. And a, a, and a WRX is a pretty fun car. It might be a bit of the expensive end for him, but it might be worth it to yeah. check out because there's uh, an abundance of used ones as well. That's true. Yeah. And there's a ton of room in that back seat. Yeah. Yeah. That is a pretty good pick. Um, cool. Thank you for that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, email us at tips at autoguide.com or maybe leave a comment on the post on Autoguide or even on the YouTube video. So we'll try to answer those. Um, moving on to fun stuff, Sam just came back <clears throat> from Thunder Hill in California. Yes, driving the hot car of the moment, Hyundai <laughs> Veloster N. So the first hot hatch from Hyundai's N performance sub-brand. Uh, N stands for Namyang, which is where Hyundai and Kia's Research and Development Center is. I did wonder that. I thought they were just one better than M. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what a lot of people were joking about and what a lot of people assumed. Um, especially funny because Albert Bierman, the program director for N, was yeah. plucked from BMW M. Uh, yeah. He was involved in uh, E30, M3, and all things like that. All the good stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he's a big deal, and he, uh, he helped to engineer the car. So I was at Thunder Hill Raceway driving it, and I'm happy to report that it's quite good. Does it live up to <clears> the hype? 
I think so. Um, I don't think it will be setting a new performance benchmark in the segment. I think a Civic Type R is still a bit sharper, definitely feels a bit faster, uh, overall a bit more capable. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Hyundai wanted to do with the Blostrand. They did want to sort of land in the middle in pricing, in the middle of performance, concentrate on personality, and concentrate on making it not only fun to drive on the track, but also a bit cheap to drive on the track. Right. So as an example of that, um, instead of opting for Brembo's, which can be uh, expensive to replace if you wear through them, things like that, uh, it's actually just got the bigger brakes off of a Kia Optima. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so it's things like that where... That's a really cool detail. I really like that. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the way that you make affordable performance is by reusing stuff and like... Exactly. Adjusting it so that... It and so these brakes, you go to the track, you wear through them, let's say, um, after a lot of track days, because even when I was out on the track, they started to fade a little bit towards the end, but the braking power stayed. You would get some juddering sort of in the brake towards that, like the very end of the day. We have a bunch of journalists out there like stamping on the brakes and things, so right. you would probably... If, you, if it was your car and you, you were doing the track day, you would treat the brakes a little bit nicer yeah, than some of these guys were, I think. Journalists are horrible to cars. We yes. are the worst. Yes. So, so abusive. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So I, I know that personality was a big deal for them because in the beginning when they were kind of developing the N, people were like, oh, are you going to run it on the Nürburgring? Like, you got to beat the Type R, right? And they were mm -hmm. like, nah, we actually have no interest in doing that because... Like, we acknowledge that it's such a good car, but what it lacks yeah. is a bit of personality. And so that's why we wanted to make the end just, like, super fun. Yeah, and I think, too, they were conscious that just making out the gate first end car, if it was 350 horsepower and it's, like, full bore, maybe it would be really powerful and fast, but people might think it's not too good or they might have issues with it. Or they it might even be said, expensive. Yeah, they even said when... Um, when Bierman went to his engineers and talked about the two liter, they were having a lot of trouble at first because they just haven't made an engine like that sure. before, right? So coming out of the gate and doing 350 and trying to beat everybody probably wasn't the best way to do it anyways. If For the first car, it's good to find it in the middle, make sure it's fun to drive, get people hooked on like more an emotion thing where it's like, right. oh, I really like to drive it and I can actually afford it and my dealer's not marking me up, hopefully. Hopefully not. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think for that reason, it's really good on track. It's cool. it's a true track day car. You could actually track it. Um, Do you think that'll be uh, that'll translate into sales? It being good rather than it being flashy type of thing, like it's hard because to it say, sounds yeah. like they focused more on. Well, as you said, making a car that's good rather than something that attracts attention with numbers, with having yeah. more horsepower. It's and not more a sticker. Of this. Yeah, it's not like a it's not like a magazine comparison yeah. winner yeah. on paper, right? I, I still think it's pretty desirable. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Just even personally, if I looked at what else it competes with, so if I put it against the Type R, the GTI, the WRX, uh, I would probably go for the N. I've Simply because, all of like, those. I think it is the least ugly and the most fun <laughs> yeah. out of all of them. That's it, true. It, I had more fun in it than I did in the STI. I, I drove the STI. I actually talked about it on the podcast. I drove the STI to Quebec for the rally race right. this year. So I had lots of time in that. I thought it was more fun than that. Um, mm. Just had a bit more personality. Yeah. Um, and it's way more trackable than a than a, than a GTI or a Golf R. It's just sharper. Yeah. It feels feels way better under braking through the corners. It just feels way less numb and squidgy. Right. And but it's also pretty comfortable though. Like just on regular roads, I drove it like two weeks ago and it was, it didn't feel like it was beating you up or anything. Yeah, end mode might break your back. Um, end, mode's <laughs> end mode's pretty tough, uh, but that's what they wanted. And then it's got a, um, for the segment, it's got a adjustable suspension. So uh, Sport Plus is pretty soft and that's yeah. the one but below full on end. It's got Super cool. normal sport, sport plus, so. Yeah, so when I first got in the Veloster N last week, it was just in the regular comfort mode or whatever it was. I'm like, uh, I, don't, I don't really get the hype. Like maybe they just hyped it up too much mm -hmm. and I didn't really understand what the big deal was. Uh, and then I put it into the second one, which is track mode or race mode or something like that, or sport. Yeah, sport. <laughs> yeah, and it was also like not much was going on. And then I flipped it into end mode and then it all made sense. It was like, ding, 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 this is what yeah. this car is all about. Hyundai called it Jekyll and Hyde. Really between, is. Yeah, <laughs> between like normal because usually like those kind of driving modes don't make that much of a difference but I feel like for the end it's a completely different car and I love mm -hmm. that about it and it's a fighty little car it likes to have fun and they had a nickname for it that I loved and I used it in my review autoguide.com if you guys want to read the review it should be live by the time you see this um, they called it the, uh, the corner rascal <laughs> <laughs> which is just like it's so I don't know it's cute and cheeky and it does kind of look like a bit of a rascal and it does like to corner so um, if I could use two words to sum up the Veloster N. I'd say it's corner rascal and I like the price and it's very fun. So it's definitely worth test driving for anyone that might consider a GTI. Even to the guy um, that asked the question, Sinbad, was it? Sinbad. Oh, Sid, Sidban, <laughs> sorry. 
Um, <laughs> uh, it doesn't have active safety tech available, so it might put it off his radar, but I think he should check it out anyways. Okay, uh, and what was the pricing? So it starts for non-performance pack models. I'll really briefly explain what the performance pack uh, has. You get the active or the, um, the limited slip diff up front, which you really, really want, really, really contributes uh, to the way it handles and being able to get the power down early out of the corners. Um, you get uh, brake-based torque vectoring without the performance pack. Um, but yeah, the performance pack gets you that and you get 25 extra horsepower from 250 to 275. Mm -hmm. um, so it starts at 28K for non-performance pack models in the US. And then they didn't say exactly how much the performance pack, they didn't tell me because I'm technically a Canadian journalist, so they didn't tell me how much the US performance pack would be. It just wasn't on the Canadian media guy's radar kind of. Right. I think it's going to be about 2,500 bucks. Um, so just over 30K for the performance pack. That's a really good value. Yeah. Really good, Considering yeah. that Type R's are selling for like 50K now. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. you can actually be seen in one of these, which you wouldn't want to do in a Type R. I could, like, yeah. I lo as much as I love driving the Type R, I am I'm embarrassed to be seen in Every it. Every time you're in, yeah. And I this doesn't look <laughs> that much, to my eye, doesn't look that much different than, like, an R-Spec Veloster. It looks, like... It looks great. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it just looks like a tuned-up Veloster with a wing. Yeah, it's but, cool. I, but I love all the little design details, like the little red details they sprinkle throughout, yeah. like the baby blue color it comes in. Blue seat belt, it's got love blue buttons that. inside. <laughs> all that stuff standard, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not going to charge you 750 bucks for colored seat belts. <laughs> Like that. Um, and then in the US, if you're one of our Canadian listeners, there's we only get the performance pack in the US. Cool. And we also get a heated steering wheel and heated seats as standard. The US doesn't get that. Sure. Uh, and ours is 34.99 Canadian. That's still a really which good is, deal. Considering that we also get the heated uh, seats and steering wheel and the standard performance pack, it's really good. That's yeah. a necessity here. Yep. I wouldn't buy a car unless it had heated seats. <laughs> I think they knew that too. So, And they, they really want people to be able to use it every day. It's yeah. not a garage car. A Civic Type R, you might put it in your garage under a cover. I could see people doing that. I think um, I would daily it. A Veloster N, you can daily it. You should daily it. Yeah. Uh, it's totally able to be dailyed. Um, so c conclusion, not a performance benchmark setter, but great value for money. Super fun. Um, and really usable on a track day. I wouldn't be afraid to track it myself. And I'm cheap. I don't like to buy new brakes. <laughs> I don't like to buy new tires. And this car I would track without hating myself for it, kind of, you know? And you got to autocross it as well, right? Yes. How was that? That was fun. Yeah, it was good. Like, if, uh, if you are into SCCA autocross, things like that, I think this car could be maybe um, a decent car to be competitive in autocross okay. with. Uh, and yeah, the brakes are super confident inspiring. If you like to drive fast, you'll know that braking, that's where all your speed is, is under braking. Yeah. And this thing's brakes feel so, so good. It's strange for a car in this segment's brakes to be that good. That's really good to hear, because <laughs> I feel remember that good. autocrossing the old Veloster, and it was awful. Oh, like, really? I have a, I've not had such a bad experience at autocross, hmm. but this new one just yeah. changes all that. The other thing that I noticed during the autocross, the car's definitely, it's, it doesn't understeer all through the corner, but it's tuned for understeer up front. So when I was like kind of giving some steering input, you feel lots of the the tire side while kind of bending through the wheel early up front cool. you know what i mean so you, you kind of know it does have good feedback through the wheel for a modern day car if you're used to driving manual steering stuff you'll probably still think it's kind of numb but for a modern day car i really like the steering too that's um, awesome so yeah i found it really easy to get 10 tenths out of it on the autocross cool. they, they said it's at a decent time but who knows and what i, bet <laughs> I think they're just trying to make me feel better <laughs> no i'm sure you're pretty fast like i'm pretty sure you got some of the best times that day <laughs> but it's confidence inspiring is my point. So it's right. um, if yeah, if you like to drive fast, it's a really easy and fun car to drive. Yeah, fast I with. found it all very accessible. Exactly. Like you, yeah. you, you could just hop in it and know how to drive it right away. There was like no real learning curve, mm -hmm. and that's what I liked about the Type R too. Was that it was just so easy to get the most out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And people love the Type R. So I wrote in my review that um, it's like if you want a Type R, you can't really afford it. You know that they're hard to come by. You know the dealers mark them up a little bit. Uh, definitely check out the Veloster, and I think you might like it as well. Awesome. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, so the next car we, we have on our list is really, really fun and really, really stupid and silly. And we love it. Uh, so we had the Hellcat wide body last week, um, which, which is an interesting. So there, there are 15 variants of Dodge Challenger you can buy. And this is second from the top. Yeah. So the only thing you can get that's better than this is the Demon. Right. Which you want to do wheelies with. <laughs> this is less for doing wheelies. This is less of a wheelie car, but still you get the same, uh, not, so you get the Hellcat engine, yeah. 707 horsepower, uh, 650 pound-feet of torque from a supercharged Hemi V8. 
Uh, and it is a delightful car. It's kind of the opposite of the Veloster N. It, it really is. It is all about big, huge, giant <laughs> numbers. Yeah. And it's a whole bunch of fun. It is. It's so trashy, but I love it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't diminish how much I love this car and like how I'm so happy it just exists. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it was it was so engaging to drive. Like we also had it with the like the six speed manual. Yeah. And like my my left leg was numb. <laughs> I had to sit for an hour in like bumper to bumper traffic. I was dying. Also, it's not even you don't even need to drive it for that long. I took it around the like around the block, and when I got <laughs> back, I was limping because you're like, holy cow, this thing is heavy. Like it's the clutch is very heavy. The clutch is very heavy, and it's got um, a foot operated um, parking brake. That's really weird. So it's like super feels super janky. old school. Feels like some old Buick. Or something, yeah. it really and, so, does. and then you you pull the release on the on the on the um, on, on on the handbrake, and you can hear it go like, and it like <laughs> snaps to the top. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so it's ancient. It's an ancient car, which is funny. But that only adds to its personality. It has it so only, much personality, yeah. uh, and it's just so large yeah. and in your face. I've never felt so socially irresponsible sitting still. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like parked in just traffic. Like, yes, I am wasting much fuel and my car is very loud and wide. I know you're all judging me. But, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> louder idling than it is when you're going like 15. It is. Yeah, Because you get that low like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And everybody knows. And immediately everybody in the neighborhood's like, what happened? Actually, I was riding it on my bike because I can't buy a functioning car. And I heard somebody like rev an engine. Like all automotive journalists. Yeah, exactly. Like. And I, uh, I heard an engine revving as I was walking, coming into the office. And I was like, gee, I wonder if that's Jody. And I came in, and you were dead in the car. I was like, yep, it sure was. It you sure didn't hear was. It. And, like, I wasn't, and that was just me trying to park it. Like, I wasn't even doing anything aggressive. And I wasn't close to the office at that time. It was like from, it was like from two or three blocks away. You're just, Wah! And you're like, oh, I wonder if that's Jody. Sure is. <laughs> And I guess that's kind of what's funny about the Hellcat is it has it's 707 horsepower. So obviously it's fat, it's fun to drive fast. But I think what a lot of people don't realize about it is that it's got so much personality and it's so different than everything else on the road today. It's also kind of fun to drive slow. Yeah, it's so fun to drive. <laughs> yeah. it's actually more fun to drive slow than it is to drive fast because <laughs> I I never went past like two thirds throttle on on the Hellcat because it was cold outside. It was snowing and we wet. We live in Canada. I live in Canada. <laughs> that was on like P zeros. Yeah. And I don't want to die, <laughs> so I'm not going to drive this car as hard as I can because I might die, Yeah. right? So I was very gentle with it, and it didn't affect how much I loved it. Mm -hmm. It was It's just such a fun car. It's ridiculous. It's so crazy. It ha You feel every one of the 700 horsepower. Like, at yeah. all times, you are constantly aware that there are 700 horsepower just, yeah. just waiting for you, just being like, just poking you in the butt, just being like, come on, <laughs> do it. come on, come on, come on. Do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> It is very expensive here, however. Yeah, so in Canada, as tested, mine was $96,000. <laughs> uh, you can get one in the States. Starting price for a regular Hellcat is 65 k To upgrade to the wide-body Hellcat, it will cost you 71 k And the wide-body gets you uh, the bigger fender flares, uh, special wheels, and a tweaked suspension. And I and honestly don't really think it's worth it because, mm -hmm. like, Okay, you fix the suspension, but let's not kid ourselves. Like that car will not take a corner yeah, as, as good so, as you want. Yeah, what's it gonna do? Like, is that the point? Is anybody actually cr tracking this gigantic yeah. Titanic thing? I just think they offer this because it looks like a demon. True. Yeah. And for people who can't get a demon, get a demon. let's just yeah. give them a wide well, body. Well, you remember they took a, a similar approach when they debuted the Hellcat at first. The Hellcat um, inspired so many people to go out and buy like Scat Pack Challengers yeah. and five point seven liter challengers. So they did start to offer a bit more exciting model variants in the non Hellcat engine yeah. type. So it makes sense for them to like expand their Hellcat range after releasing the Demon. So it's sort of like attracts and hypes up that customer yeah. base a little bit. I mean bit. it works exactly as a Halo car should, right? Like you yeah. see that like big shiny one at the top, oh I can't afford it or there's a limited production. Let's just mm -hmm. keep going down until I can find something I can afford. Yeah. Uh, but honestly I think I'd rather just get like a scat pack shaker or something like that. Right. And it, it, it doesn't like the Hellcat is really fun, but so is a Scat Pad Shaker. Like mm -hmm. you don't need that to have fun. Yeah, totally agreed. I think anyone who buys a Hellcat wants it's like, yeah, I got the Hellcat. Like it's sort of like a badge thing. It's yeah. sort of like back to the Audi and the Genesis thing where it's like you pay a little bit extra for the Hellcat badge and you know, even though you're not gonna use all seven hundred seven horsepower too often, you really want it for that yeah. reason. So yeah, I think I agree. If you're in the market for a fast challenger, you might as well skip the scat pack because not that many people are going to use a 707 horsepower car. Well, especially coming from Canada, like you cannot winter that car. It'll yeah. be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's definitely a car that makes more sense in Texas than Canada, oh, too. Oh, for so. sure. <laughs> yeah, like, if, if you have any cold weather or anything to deal with, I don't think this will do. Uh, I also don't think they sell winter tires that are, like, this <laughs> fat. <laughs> That's probably a good point. I mean, it would just turn into skis so quickly. Yeah, yeah. it would just be like a hockey puck on ice. Yeah. It would be like way too much to handle. Uh, mm -hmm. But I really, really enjoyed it. I also loved uh, the reactions I got when driving it. Yes. And because it's like, it's such an accessible, like, dream car for people. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone lets you in in traffic. Like, you're not that pretentious person in a BMW. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're a working man. No, it's See, true. And you... it's also the kind of thing, like, people, they want to shoot you a thumbs up. If you're yeah. in a supercar, they'd rather ignore you and not, like, give you that, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, they don't but, want to give you the satisfaction. Yeah, I'm but in a Hellcat, sure. they're like, nice man, like. Yeah, like, truck drivers yeah. loved me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just regular people were giving me thumbs like, up. Like, people on the streets, like, everyone really likes it. Yeah, and I caught lots of people, like, trying to, sneak photos and stuff, yeah. which I always think is really cool. I found that people were less charmed by me. Being really? Uh, I, there was a Dodge Ram who was very excited that I was oh, driving by and just stopped all traffic to let me in ahead of him. Yeah. But I feel I was driving down a street that was relatively busy with a lot of foot traffic and there, I, got, I got a lot of cut eye. I got a lot of people looking at me like, white trash. Maybe. <laughs> which is fair enough. I was white trash at that time. Maybe that's why I got such different reactions because I'm like, like maybe... not the target audience. <laughs> exactly. And you see a white they're guy like, in that She's truck. breaking stereotypes. I like that. Yeah, yeah. thumbs up for that chick. And when they see me in the thing, they're like, that guy probably owns a confederate flag. And you're just like, That's oh. so funny. It's funny because I do get different reactions. Like, for example, when I was driving the McLaren, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people were just like, oh, she's just a rich kid from China. Her dad bought her that supercar. But, like, when driving the Hellcat, I feel like the vibes I got was like, hey, you worked hard for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, they probably just think it's yours, whereas the McLaren, they're like, oh, rich person. Yeah, like, like crazy rich Asian or whatever. But, yeah, because, uh, like, a Hellcat's not really a rich person's car. It, it is the kind of car that uh, maybe a, a middle-class person tries to splurge on a bit. For instead sure. Instead of it being a rich person's yeah, car. Yeah, so. I mean, it's expensive, but it's not like prohibitively expensive. It doesn't cost like 200,000 bucks or something. It's some, it's an aspirational car. For yeah. sure. Yeah, it's something that you, you could do if you mm -hmm. owned to like a chain of pharmacies or something. Like, <laughs> like a McLaren is like, yeah, well, okay. Basically, if you were like a drug dealer is what you say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not very subtle if you're a drug dealer. This would be a terrible car for a drug dealer, although it has a massive trunk. So that might That's help in, your, in the drugs. It'd be good for like running booze if that ever has to be a thing again. If prohibition <laughs> is like back in style. I feel like the charger would be better for running moonshine. True, just very true. Like it's that. also faster in a straight line. Yeah, there you go. It, it, it'll do like 201 miles an hour and the Challenger is less than that because limited. the front right. end is shaped like a house. I love that about it though. Yeah, and I it like looks how, way better. I like how for the Hellcat, uh, they took out two of the lights and they're like air intakes now. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. There's so many cool details all around that car that I love, that normally I would mm -hmm. think are really tacky, but for it just works on this car. Like the uh, the steering wheel badge that says SRT yeah. glows red in the dark. <laughs> FCA is kind of good at like doing cheeky things that make you want things. Yeah. Like they'll even like they'll style up like they had a whole cartoon kind of avatar thing that they drew up for Air Grabber for the demon like just for its hood and intake system. You know what I mean? Right. Like they like have to brand every little thing and it's really cool though. It's well, and because fun. we can talk about this now, they're they're also doing the Elephant, which is hilarious. Oh right, we forgot about that. Yeah, which is it's a what it's a seven liter V8 crane <laughs> engine or Hemi <laughs> crane engine which you can stuff into. Things Anything that are big enough to fit a seven liter. Whatever is big what, enough what can to fit. fit. What, yeah, I don't even know what you could put. I, they're doing a charger, a 69 charger for the reveal Sweet. at SEMA. So, like, obviously. Things of that is it, size. Is it a B body or an A body? I can't remember. I don't know old Chrysler chassis totes. I don't know, but I just love the fact that they called it the Hellephant. The Hellephant. Well, and it's a nod to the original 426 Hemi, which was known as the Elephant in the, at, at the time. And then they had the teaser with the Hellcat claw. And you know, you're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. you the know, whole jungle out there. Exactly. You know, cry, So cry I pose notes. a question to you guys. What would you put a elephant in if you could put it in something? Um, it doesn't have to be realistic. I'd put it in the truck that we were just talking about. So like a short box. Mm. Ooh, that is a single cab. very good. Short box, single cab ram. Yeah, that's with exactly like, what, with a roof, like a, a top on the box. With a cap? Yeah, with a little cap. That is an excellent answer. <laughs> How much fun, and you know it would fit. It would fit, yeah. That's actually probably one of the few modern-day FCA products that it would fit in. Mm -hmm. I w I'm curious if it would fit in a modern-day Challenger. 
I feel like it has to. Yeah, you mm-hmm. would. If they're gonna, to. if they're gonna call it the elephant, <laughs> I think they're hoping that some Hellcat drivers yeah, will just swap someone, it out. Someone will swap one. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like an original Challenger would be fun to do it with too. Just get like a seventy Challenger, paint it all white, and do mm-hmm. a vanishing point thing. I feel like it needs to go. A thousand in one of these horsepower. Guys. Yeah. Oh my God. Put it in the <laughs> like back. Right here. That would be crazy. I was just gonna suggest to put it in your Beetle. You can make it yeah, like a yeah. mid-engine yes. Beetle. Or Seb as a Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the bar, th- or yeah, just turn it into a thousand horsepower beetle. Oh my god, that'd be so much fun. Okay, yeah. So yeah, our problem, yeah, yeah, problem solved. It would awesome. be fun. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you want the latest episodes, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to whichever podcast provider you like. We're on Google Play Music, Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts. Uh, Pocket Cast, we're on all of those things. So thank you so much. Um, And a new episode comes every Friday. So check us out and thank you for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Bye.